So hi all, we are today we are here to share a success story of achieving 10x scale with Golang and how we did it. Yeah, my name is Yang, uh, he's De Sheng, and we are both software engineers at Abnormal Security. Both of us built and maintained the product we are about to share with you. And fun fact, we're actually both from Singapore. So we took a real long flight to get here. It's actually about time to sleep right back home, so the coffee really helped. Now, Abnormal Security is an email cybersecurity startup. And essentially, uh, what we do is we provide a service that processes email data and uses behavioral ML to catch malicious email. So we've, we've had huge success at it. And if you are worried about phishing email, which you should be, uh, do check us out. So what did we do? The problem we were facing was with one of our products, Unwanted Mail, which is a service that filters out promotional mail and spam. Now, typically, these type of mail uh, affects work productivity. So customers often want to either block it or manage it effectively. So to do this, we have to process all mail of our customer so that we can detect uh, what is unwanted mail. And as our customer base grew as a startup, you know, you grow exponentially, we started hitting scaling problems with our current architecture that uses Python and Celery. So specifically around the 30M mark that you see on the Grafana chart there, we started having a ton of outages. So to solve it, uh, what we did, upon we turned to Golang and Kafka, and this is a high level overview of our new architecture using Kafka where we essentially forward all mail notifications to our native Golang Kafka uh, queue implementation. And a Golang service which is deployed across 10 tasks, uh, then consumes requests via the Kafka consumer and processes them asynchronously. We saw a huge success with this implementation. Uh, early on, we had to, with our early on architecture with Python and Celery, we actually had to throttle requests uh, due to architecture limitations just to get by, right, with the outages and stuff. But with Golang Kafka, we no longer needed to, and traffic instantly shot up if you compare the y-axis of these two uh, Grafana charts. Same thing applied to our processing time. With the help of our routines, which Dershan will talk more about, we were able to significantly lower processing time from minutes to seconds. Yeah, it's just fast profits, right? So how do we do it? Um, Dershan will now share more. Thanks, Yang. Uh, so first, I want to say that coffee helped for Yang, but not for me. So uh, you guys are going to hear me sleep talk a lot. Yeah. Anyway, it's time to talk technicals. So first, I'll give some background about our architecture choice and why high throughput within an instance is so important for us. We first made computations on each email, which has been annotated upstream by our detection systems with signals and flags, and only a very small subset gets further processed, where they will then require I.O. interactions with other services or data source. So for those who are wondering why event loop isn't good enough, I'm looking at you, Node.js folks. Yeah, the way our system works is such that I.O. interaction forms very small minority in our computation load, so the fan out method is so much more helpful here. So I won't go through too much Kafka stuff in detail, but for quick context on an instance level, the throughput of a Kafka topic is really limited by the partition number, since one consumer reads from one partition at maximum. The higher partitions uh, in a Kafka topic is also generally allocated cautiously because a greater number of partitions will lead to higher Kafka broker overhead most of the time. So in terms of concurrent instances, we can't just go all out and say, I'm going to get 10,000 partitions and 10,000 VMs uh, to achieve high throughput. Uh, it's better to consider spinning out a large number of subroutines per, uh, per consumer instance, uh, and that's definitely what we did over here. So, and this is where Golang and Kafka work together so well because Go routines are so cheap in computation resource. We spun out a thousand sub processes for each consumer instance. Uh, so, if you want to read from the code snippet, yeah, don't panic if you don't see the word Go inside. It's just that p dot start uh, is the implementation inside spins off the Go routine. So, yeah, just FYI. So, TLDR is that the whole process took up less than 100 megabytes of memory and less than 0.1 vCPU cores. This is in comparison to back when we used Python and Celery, where just four, four, goal, uh, four sub routines were taking up more than 50% of our CPU and memory resources. Yeah, so enough of, of me ranting about technicals. I'll pass the time back to Yang. Yeah, it's a good thing this is GopherCon and not PyCon. We reaped a ton of benefits from this shift uh, from Python to Golang, as you can see right there. Uh, we've listed it all out, and I think since we're all here at GopherCon, we actually know the benefits of Golang. If you want to read more, we posted all about it on our company blog, links right there. So I think in summary, in theory, right, 
uh, telling an engineer we want to build a reliable, scalable system to switch from Python to Golang is a no-brainer. But the reality is, you know, we always face a lot of challenges um, and a lot of pushback for a bunch of other reasons. So we hope today's sharing, our success case, will be a compelling reason for you to go back and, you know, do the same and build a better GoPro world. Uh, we also want to shout out to our staff engineer, Pravin, for guiding us on this project. And if you're an engineer looking for interesting, meaningful problems to solve in Golang, abnormal security is always hiring. So feel free to reach out to us, and we hope Golang helped you as much as it helped us. Thank you.